Hi folks, let's do a steel grilling showdown. Let's figure out with the Tormach what's going to be a better recipe. Pushing a high speed steel twist drill as hard as we can. Good news is they're relatively inexpensive. Or should we go with this 5 8 inch carbide insert from Shards? It's an Ultradex style drill. Let's have some fun. Let's play around. I think we're going to find that the high speed steel is what works out. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. I'm gonna hedge this Wednesday widget right off the bat and say my concern with these is either horsepower or overall machine requirements. These drills really like a super stiff machine and carbide is a wonderful thing. God bless carbide, but it needs to be pushed hard enough to really work. So we'll see. I also hope you guys take away how hard we can push a relatively inexpensive high speed seal twist drill. So let's work up a recipe. How do we get started with speeds and feeds? We've got this Excel file and we've got a tab down here dedicated for today's Wednesday widget, insert drill versus twist drill. This is available to download free for anybody over on the NYC CNC website. Go to speeds and feeds, the basics. And the first card getting started with speeds and feeds has a really good video and the latest version of our Excel sheet is always here. In it, we've got a couple different tabs. The second tab is feeds and speeds. And we've got this comment that most of the times with drill, we really recommend for high speed seal, somewhere between 100 and 200 surface feet per minute. I pulled up a random internet chart to look for high speed steel, uh, speeds and feeds in 1018 cold rolled steel, which is what we're doing today. And the first thing I saw was 80 surface feet per minute and six thou per revolution, not per flute, per revolution. That's about 0.15 millimeters per revolution. That's a little bit lower than our normal starting surface feet, but I'm fine with that as our cut number one starting recipe. Under half of a horsepower, about 0.68 cubic inches of material removal. So no noise, that's great. We're pulling up a chip. The fact that those chips are even on both sides tells me my drill is sharpened correctly. This happens to be a brand new drill. I really recommend starting with a new drill when you're testing feeds and speeds. Way better in my opinion than most people can do a regrind. Our Fusion 360 drilling cycle is set to chip breaking partial retract. And that pecking depth looks like a funny number. If you right click on it, and say edit expression, you can see what Fusion is thinking here or doing, and what it's doing is it's taking the tool diameter times a quarter. So that's some sort of a standardized or factory sort of recommended to peck a quarter of the diameter, which is fine for here. It's helping with chip breaking and making sure we get the chip evacuated. Cut number two, we're bumping up the surface feet from 80 to 100, and we're bumping up the inch per revolution from six thousandths of an inch to eight thousandths of an inch. That's about 0.2 millimeters. Normally, I would recommend only increasing one or the other when you do a test cut. So either the surface feet per minute or the inch per revolution. I'm pretty comfortable that we were really conservative uh, on our first cut, so we're bumping them both up here. Brings us to about 0.77 horsepower and 1.13 cubic inches of material removal. Again, it's whisper silent, which I love. It's so awesome when you're drilling holes and it's just dead quiet. Good chip evacuation. One thing that to note is a drill forming really good spirals when it's in the hole is a good thing. It may not do that when it enters the hole and when it exits the hole. So you may get kind of different or rogue looking chips and that's okay. Cut number three, we're bumping up the inch per revolution from eight thousandths of an inch to ten thousandths of an inch or about 0.25 millimeters. Increase in horsepower to 0.96 and 1.41 cubic inches of material removal. Again, silent. Notice I'm not even spotting these holes. Good chip evacuation, no chatter, no noise. I like it. You can even start to see part of the chip is getting hot and part of it's not. And take a look at that chip. It's really interesting. If you think about it, the outside of that chip has more blue in it. Why is that? It's because the surface footage at the outside of the drill is higher. Think about riding a merry-go-round. When you're at the outside of that merry-go-round, you're traveling faster, that you're covering more ground beneath your feet. So think about, just like when you were a kid, if you rubbed your hand on carpet, the faster you go, the more heat you generate. That is surface feet. So it's really cool to read those chips and start to understand it. Hole number four, we're bumping up the surface feet from 100 to 125, the same feed per revolution. Starting to get up there, 1.2 horsepower and about 1.76 cubic inches. 
A note though on the horsepower, we went through this again in the prior Speeds and Feeds video. We're making an assumption on the KC. That's a value that we pull from the Sandvik technical uh, guide or rotating tools PDF, which we have a link to on the NYC CNC website. And we're making a pretty big assumption about what is our machine efficiency because one of those unfortunate realities of the world is that what a motor is rated for on its plate for horsepower is not gonna be the horsepower at the tip of the tool. You've got a lot of things uh, between the motor and the tip of the tool that unfortunately don't ever really increase your horsepower but generally reduce it. So we're doing an 80% efficiency factor here to make these horsepower assumptions. Still sounds great though, no problem at all. We're seeing some blue in the chip, but it's not too blue, it's not too hot. I like it. In my limited machine experience, uh, I've found that about 10 thou per rev of a feed rate or 0.25 millimeters starts to get at the limit of how hard you wanna push a twist drill. So my next move here is to bump up the surface feet yet again from 125 in the last hole to 150, 1.44 horsepower. So we should be getting close to the limit of the Tormach, 2.1 cubic inches of material removal. Let's see what that looks like. Let's watch that again, folks. Starting to hear a hair of noise, and right there you can hear the spindle start to bog down. So we are, as I expected, starting to get at that limit of the horsepower. So for the next cut, let's back that surface footage back down to 125, I like that. But let's try increasing the feed per rev up to 12 thousandths of an inch, which is 0.3 millimeters per rev. I like it, folks. Let's watch that again. The machine's not angry at us. Sound is really important. Listen to your tools, listen to your machine. We are definitely putting the load on the spindle, but it's not bogging down. I like it. Let's do one more test cut though, the last one. Let's back it down just a hair from 12 thousandths to 11 thousandths per rev, or about 0.28 millimeters. 125 surface feet per minute, 11 thou per rev. And the reason for this video has nothing to do with drilling holes. It has to do with removing material. And a lot of times, if you need a pocket or a larger hole, you're gonna start by drilling it. And it's a wonderful thing because twist drills are really good at machining or removing material in a straight plunge. End mills aren't so good at that. So by doing this, we're giving us the ability to create a 2D adaptive tool path where instead of having to do some sort of a slower ramp or helical ramp in, we're able to plunge straight down, which is faster and it's better on our tool and end mill life. I believe this one was a standard length, quarter inch. $20 is not is a good price for an end mill of this quality. Originally these were called for stainless steel, but they're actually, uh, they have a sharper edge, which is great for mild steel as well. And we're running it faster than I used to, and it's great. 225 surface feet per minute, two thousandths of an inch or 0.05 millimeters per tooth. And because we've got five teeth, that puts us at 34 inches a minute or about 860 millimeters per minute. We're taking a 20% width of cut and we're doing it in step downs of 0.2 inches or about 80% of the tool's diameter. And it's awesome, look at it. We're making a real chip. The machine can handle it just fine. It's definitely pushing it, but awesome. And this is a great way. This is, ends up leaving us with a three quarter inch hole. I would love to hear from other people in the comments below, but I'm not sure there's a better cost effective cost per hole to remove material reliably to get a three quarter inch hole through steel in a Tormach. That's what's exciting about this. All right, folks, time out. If it's not obvious, we did the insert drill first and we switched the order of the video because the twist drill wins. It absolutely wins. And this is nothing wrong with the Tormach. It's just the fact that these insert drills have to be in machines that have two, three, four times as much cast iron. Cast iron is an amazing thing. Uh, and it's one of the contributors to a machine rigidity, and it's okay. Uh, I was curious to see if they worked. I'm not gonna lie, I was hoping it would've gone better um, because it's an investment and it's all about ROI, like the video we did on measuring return on investment in the machine shop. Yes, this drill combination is $135. This is two inserts, which you need are $14. You actually get 
three cutting edges per insert. So that's $4.70 per cutting edge. And if it could go faster, that is half the price of either of the twist drills that we use. So half the price and potentially faster, that's a potential win. It didn't work out that way. Quick note before we watch some of the footage, we were holding it in an ER32 uh, tool holder from Tormach for $35. I absolutely recommend picking one of these up if you own a Tormach. The benefit is ER32 will hold up to three quarters of an inch. So it's a great way to hold those awkward or larger tools. We only use it maybe once a month, but it's great to have in the wheelhouse. The recommended starting cut was 225 surface feet, 2.2 thou per revolution or about 0.055 millimeters. If we wanna compare material removal rates, which is what matters here, slightly the larger diameter tool, it's between the first and second cut, which what the high speed steel was just no problem at all. It was cake work. Let's take a look. So it doesn't sound as bad in my opinion on the video as it did in person, but not great. You can hear some rattling. I think that was actually something I had loose on my table, so sorry about that. That's a, a definitely not ideal when you're trying to do this sort of testing. But again, our conclusion was we were pretty close to two cubic inches per minute on the high-speed steel twist drill. And it's worth noting, too, that as much as carbide uh, tool holders and inserts are awesome, you do run the risk of a more expensive collision or crash if you do have something go wrong. So there's got to be a clear win to make that an investment and jump. Cut number two, 1.27, still way in the easy range of the high-speed steel. It's not going to go well, folks. Lots of problems, some of them frankly probably beyond my capabilities or experience on commenting. I would welcome positive comments below. It's always tempting to want to delete this footage and not show it, but darn it, we filmed it, so let's walk through it. Next cut, 300 surface feet, 1.41 cubic inches. Spindle's significantly bogged down. That's not good for process reliability. It's not good really for long-term for the spindle, so we're, we're not doing so hot. We have more torque at a higher RPM. So we increased it on this next cut to 400 surface feet, dropped down the feed per rev, about the same material removal rate. I just wanted to see, hey, are we gonna find a sweet spot? Could this tool work? I turned the coolant up as well. Nope, not good. Actually, probably better, but still not something I'm interested in, in, in implementing into our workflow. Finally, going the extreme opposite way, let's slow down a bunch. I don't know if we have enough torque, but let's get the service footage down. That can help pull out some of the chatter or rigidity issues. Slower feed per rev. We gotta be careful that we don't rub, which we might be here. We're at an anemic material removal rate. So frankly, this isn't even a good thing if it does work because it's, it's not impressive, but let's just see what happens. And I could be wrong. Perhaps the ER collet, which they do have flex in them. Perhaps that is part of the problem here. The set screw holders from Tormach I found are stiffer in general than any ER collet system as well. So maybe we try that. We'd have to bore out a custom one to fit the 5 8 inch shank. But ultimately, the, I was really impressed with the high speed steel. So that's going to be the answer here. Last cut, slightly lower yet surface feet per minute or RPM, slightly higher feed per rev, trying to make sure we don't rub. It works, but it's not well. It just doesn't. And that's okay, folks. This is what's awesome. You've got to learn not only your machine, but you've got to learn what tools are good recipes and what materials and what setups and what are you trying to do. We accomplished something great. I have never pushed high-speed steel drills this hard in steel before. It looks great. It sounds great. It's reliable. The drills are relatively inexpensive. We included the McMaster links. Uh, we were using this coded version, which is $10.24, because that's the one we had in, on hand. If you were trying to bootstrap, I would consider buying the uncoded version for about $2 or 20% less. Again, part number here for that. And this is great. This is awesome. We're getting to a three quarter inch hole pretty darn quickly. Folks, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next Wednesday.